Okay, now when you say distance here, by their definition, you use the small letter d as its variable, and this is a total length of path an object travels. Okay, so total length that an object travels, that is going to be your distance. Displacement, on the other hand, remember we use a small letter d with a bar on top. And this is a total length from the reference point. Again, if you are checking your displacement, that should be the total length from the reference point. This should be the change in, pos in position of an object. Okay, so it's change in position of an object. Now let's take a look at our example here. Okay, but before we go to that, remember, whenever you have a vector quantity, you need your directions. Okay, I hope you are already familiar with the different directions that you have. The four major directions that you have, of course, would be north. That's uh, pointing upwards. Again, that's north. Then, of course, you have south here, which is the opposite of north. You have west. Okay, going to, to towards the left, that's west, then going towards the right, that would be east. Now, whenever we are solving later on, when we go to, when we get to the different examples that we have, and when you need to solve for your displacement, you need to remember the north, north direction and east direction would be using positive signs. Okay, again, north and east will use positive signs. While south and west, is these are going to use negative signs, okay? I'm going to explain this as we go to the different examples that we have later. Okay, so again, your four major directions would be north, south, east, and west. Again, north and east, they're going to use positive signs, and south and west, they're going to use negative signs. Now, there are also some other directions that would come between these four major directions that we have. So if you have a direction which is between north and east, you would be calling that northeast. Okay, so that's northeast. If you have a direction that is between south and east, you'd call that southeast. Okay, between west and south, you'd call that southwest. And between north and west, you'd call that northwest. Okay, so again, you will see these examples or these directions in the examples that we'll have in the following slides. Okay, let's take a look at one example that we have here. Okay, so consider this example that you have on the screen. You have a person represented by this symbol here, and you have four different points. Okay, so you have point A, point B, point C, and point D. Now, as you can see, point A is a frame of reference, or that's the reference point that is the starting point. Okay, now as you can see, the way that this person travels is represented by the purple arrows that we have. Okay, so first this person went to point B, then to point C, then to point D, then to point A. Now you can also see the lengths that this person has traveled. So going to point B, that would be three meters. From B to C, that's five meters. From C to D, that's three meters. Then from D to A, that would be five meters, okay? So this is the representation of how this person has traveled from all, from the reference point, which is point A to B, C, D, and to A. Now, if you will be asked, what is the distance that this person has traveled? What do you think is the answer? 16 meters. Okay, so 16 meters, let's try to check. Okay, so distance here, would be three meters that's going towards letter B or point B. Then from point B, he traveled to point C. So that's five meters. Now from C to D, that's three meters. Then from D to A, that's five meters. Now remember your definition for distance is just total length that the person has traveled, okay? So total length. So that means we simply add everything okay just add all the lengths that this person has traveled so that would be three meters plus five meters plus three meters plus five meters so that means the correct answer is 16 meters that's correct okay so distance traveled is just 16 meters now what about your displacement now remember i told you that we have four major directions here your north south west and east now out of four uh, out of these four major directions remember i told you north and east would use the positive sign and west and south these are going to use your negative sign okay now let's take a look at the travel that this person has made now from a going b what direction would that be from a going b what direction would that be 
Okay, that's north. Christopher said that's north. So that means that should be using a positive sign. Okay, so that means we have three meters here. You can also use plus three meters. Okay, so they, they mean the same thing. So that means the three meters here should use a positive sign because this person has traveled, traveled northwards. Now from B to C, what direction will that be? Okay, that's east. All right, so that's correct. That's traveling east. And we said east would also be using the positive sign. So that means we need to add five meters to the previous three meters that we have. That's why we use the plus sign here. That's five meters, plus five meters. Now from C to D, what direction would that be? That is south, okay, that's correct. So that means we need to use negative sign. Remember, we said west and south would be using a negative sign. So that means we need to use minus three meters here. And of course, lastly, you have from D to A, which is what direction? That's west, so that means this should be using a negative sign. That's why we have a minus five meters here, okay? So we have minus five meters here. Now looking at the different quantities that we have here, you know that three meters and negative three meters will just be canceled out. Positive five meters and negative five meters will just be canceled out, okay? So that means displacement is zero. That's why the answer of Daniel was correct. Displacement is zero. And we can also see that in our illustration. He started from point A. And of course, he has also went back to point A. So point A is also his last position. That means there is no difference in his frame of reference. He has not actually changed, changed his position. Okay, so displacement would be zero. We don't need to, to write any direction here of course whenever you have a value of displacement as zero you don't need to write any direction okay if your displacement is any other value except zero then you need to write your direction i will be showing you that when we go to the next example all right now let's take a look at the second example that you have okay so this is a situation that you have here you left your house and drove uh, and drove four miles east then you drove three miles north to the office. What is the total distance you traveled and what is your displacement? Okay, now to make it easier for you to imagine, we have your illustration here. So this is your house. And the first thing that you did was you drove four miles east. Okay, so this four miles east here. And after that, you drove three miles north. Okay, so this is three miles north going to the office. Now the question is, what is the total distance you travel? And second question, of course, what is your di displacement? Now we start with the distance. What should be the answer for distance? Seven miles. Okay, so Ronald says seven miles, that is correct. Distance again is just the total length that the person has traveled. So that's simply four miles plus three miles, giving us just seven miles. Remember, no direction for distance, okay? No direction. Distance is just a scalar quantity. Now, what about your displacement? Okay, now for us to be able to answer that, let's take a look at your next slide, okay? Now, remember your displacement, so the change in position from the reference point or from the frame of reference. Remember, that person started from the house, this one here. Okay, now he traveled eastwards, then traveled northwards, and of course he stopped here at the office. Okay, so that means your displacement, the displacement here would be from the house going to the office. Okay, so this one here now is an example that uh, Christopher was looking for. Okay, so it would be five, we'll find out. Okay, so again, he traveled eastwards, then northeast, uh, nor northward, sorry. Then, of course, um, he stopped here. He stopped at the office, and he started from here. That means we're looking for this, this side here. Now, as you can see, if you're trying to look at your illustration, we can see that we have actually formed a triangle. Okay, we've actually formed a triangle. It has three sides. Okay, so this is the first side here, this second side, and of course, this is the last side, which is the longest length of our triangle. Now, what do you think should we use to get our displacement? Now, again, whenever you have um, a displacement problem and you are given an illustration that forms a triangle, Daniel says you are going to use the hypotenuse formula. We call that your Pythagoras theorem. 
Okay, so this is the formula that you are going to use. This formula states that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now, C squared here, this is your hypotenuse. When you say hypotenuse, of course, that is the longest side of your triangle. Okay, that's the longest leg of your triangle. Your A and your B here, those are the two other sides. Okay, so your Pythagoras theorem states that the square of your hypotenuse would be equal to the sum of the squares of the two other sides. Okay, so that's C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Again, C squared here, that will be the longest side, or Daniel said that's your hypotenuse. Okay, so we are looking for your C side here, right? We are looking for this side in your equation. Now we proceed with our computation. So we have C squared and we have four miles for A. Remember, we got this from our previous problem. Okay, so remember he's, we said he traveled eastwards uh, four miles. Okay, so that's four miles here. That's why we have four or four miles as the first uh, quantity that we have. Then of course, B, he traveled northwards three miles. Okay, so that's three miles squared. Okay, any other question or any question uh, until this point? Again, you only need to use this formula if you are forming a triangle. Okay, if the travel of the person forms a triangle, you can use the, um, this, this formula here. Otherwise, you're not going to be using this formula. You're only going to be using the different signs that we have. Okay, so that's four miles and three miles. Now, proceeding with our computation here, four miles squared, four times four, or four squared, that would, of course, give us 16 miles. Okay, so that's 16 miles squared. And three times three, that's three squared, that would give us nine miles squared. Any question? Okay, now having these quantities now, we proceed with addition. Okay, that's 16 plus 9. So, of course, that would give us 25 miles squared. Okay, so that's 25 miles squared. Remember, we're looking for the value of C. So, for us to get the value of C, we need to get the square root of both sides. Okay, so we are going to square root both sides. That means we have C equals the square root of 25 miles squared. Okay, C equals the square root of 25 miles squared. When we get the square root of C squared here, we're only left with C. Okay, so we cancel the square there or the, the power of 2. We cancel that because we also place this in a square root sign. Okay, so now we're left with just C equals 25 or the square root of 25 miles squared. And so the answer that we have would be 5 miles. The square root of 25, of course, is 5. Is five. That's correct, right? Because 5 times 5 or 5 squared would be 25, okay? So square root of 25 would be five. The square root of miles squared would be miles. Now take a look at your direction here. Any question where we, where we got the direction of northeast? Any question? Why do we have a direction of northeast or any? Okay, if you're looking at your illustration here, you can see that the direction is going this way. Okay, it's not north, it's not east, it is between north and east. And look at your directions here, you know that between north and east, that is going to be northeast. That's why your direction is northeast. 